understand it better, understand it better by and by. Amen. Thankful to the God of heaven that we will understand it better by and by. Good morning, Green Meadow. Amen. Good morning, Green Meadow. Amen. One more time. Good morning, Green Meadow. Amen. Glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. They say we could have been dead and gone, or sleeping in our grave, but God, he made that death angel go away. And I thank God for simply being in the presence of the Lord, in the house of the Lord, in the body of Christ, which resides in uh, the church of Christ. Uh, I, I want to thank all the brethren for all they have done on today in, uh, in our devotion. Uh, I want to thank all those who read the scripture, uh, who have prayed, and all those song leaders. Amen. They have sung, uh, has led us into worship, and I thank God for that. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't join in with them. Amen. Is that all right? Uh, I, I don't know what y'all come to do, but I came to give God a little praise. Is that all right? Y'all going to help me sing out a little bit? I love to praise him. Is that all right? Say, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. You know that I love to praise his holy name. Because he's my rock. He's my, my rock, my rock, my sword and shit. Yeah. He's a will, he's a will in the middle of, a, and I know he'll never, oh, he'll never, oh, cause he's just a joke, somewhere that I have found, won't you say hallelujah, hallelujah. You said, I love to praise his name. The church say, hallelujah. 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 You said, I love to praise his name. You know that I love to praise. You know that I love to praise. To praise his whole name. One more time. Because he's my rock. He's my rock, my rock, my rock, my sword. And yeah, he's a will, he's a will in the middle. And I know him never, oh, him never. Yeah, because he's just a joke somewhere that I have found. Won't you say hallelujah? Uh, hallelujah. Say, I love to praise his name. The church say, Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. You said, I love to praise his name. You know that I love to pray. You know that I love to pray. You know that I love to praise, to praise his holy name. Amen. I love to praise him. Amen. 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 Once again, we want to thank God for the privilege and the opportunity uh, to be able to stand before you all, to stand before God's people and proclaim his holy divine word. I thank God for this. It's definitely a privilege and an honor to be able to preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings. Amen. Uh, once again, I want to thank all the brethren for what they have done in the devotion on today. I want to thank uh, Brother Ward for his prayer. I want to thank Brother Thompson for that uh, reading of the text. I uh, want to thank uh, Brother Ryan and Brother Jordan and Brother Story for uh, being our song leaders on today and uh, bringing us into worship uh, through psalm. I thank God for them. And I thank God simply for you. Uh, thank you all for simply being here on today, being in the place. God is intentional. He has you here for a reason. Uh, so as Brother Story said, uh, open your heart and open your mind and listen to what God is saying through me. Yes. Amen. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, we see on today, God sent a wingman, y'all. Yes, sir. Is that all right? That's all right? God sent a wingman, y'all. Genesis 24, chapter 24, verses 1 through 4. The thought, somebody say, thank you. Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Amen. 
uh, now I said all the time uh, in, in, in speaking uh, of God's word and speaking in general that uh, uh, that you won't understand something that don't make sense to you. So okay. preaching that don't make sense, I say it all the time, it won't make a change. Right. Uh, so I'm here to make it make sense for you to get an understanding. Solomon said in, in all things, yeah. get understanding. Uh -huh. Amen. Not only knowledge and wisdom, but in all things, get an understanding. Yeah. So on today, we're going to try to get an understanding, y'all. Is that all right? All right, I won't be before you long, but my intention is to definitely be strong. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Let's get a little background of this thing, y'all. Now, uh, now Abraham uh, was a blessed man of God uh, due to his obedience to God, his faith in God, and, and simply his love for God. Uh, we go back to Genesis chapter 22, and we see where Isaac is to be offered as a sacrifice to God. Is that right? Uh, now, with Isaac... Being the son of Abraham, Genesis 21 and 3, this is an ultimate text yes, of obedience to God. Yes, the Hebrew verb nisah, which is translated as tempt, means to prove the quality of, uh -huh. not to entice to do wrong. Okay. God used this event to affirm the sterling character of Abraham's faith by giving him the incredibly difficult task of sacrificing his son Isaac in the land of Moriah. Is that right? Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. Look, look, look what God said in Genesis 22, 2. He said, and he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. His only son, y'all, the son that he loveth. Then, but look, look what Abraham said. Catch what Abraham said in verse 3. Abraham then rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac, his son, claved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Look at that. that no, Abraham was a blessed man through his obedience to God. Amen. Look, I don't know. He, Abraham did not stand there and say, God, this is my only son. He did not stand there and say, God, can I go get a clean animal? He didn't say, God, can I sacrifice anything else but my son? That's right, that's right. He simply just done what God said to do. That's what he did. And, and children of God, we need to be more like Abraham and just do what God said to do. Amen. amen. Life would go so much smoother and things would be so much better. It will go so much easier if we simply done what God said to do. I, I, I was talking to my grandmother the other day about a situation going on at work, and, and, and we was talking on the phone, and one thing she said that stuck out to me, I hope I remember forever, she said, Christians, she said, we just like Nike. Y'all know what Nike say, don't you? They said, we just like Nike, they slogan, they say, just do it. Christians, we just do it. You don't have to ask God why we got to do it. We don't have to ask God. We don't have to get a description or detail of what God wants us to do. When God say do, Christians should just do it. Amen. We should just do it. And Abraham simply just done what uh, God had told of him to do. And if we simply do what God said to do, everything would be all right. Is that right? Uh, now, 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 as Abraham and Isaac, they, they, they arrived up to, to the appointed place, Abraham began to set up the wood and place it in, uh, on his son, verse 6. And then Isaac said, Father, uh, we have everything we need for the offering, but, 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 but where is the lamb? Yeah. Abraham said in verse 8, God, God will provide. Yeah. Is that right? He said in verse 8, God will provide. And then, uh, what did it do, Brother Joe? Yeah. Uh, that was a ram in a bush, wasn't it? Yeah. God, he, Abraham said, God will provide. Next thing you know, Abraham, look over, and there's a ram in the bush, one of the most precious sheep in the, in, in the flock. And it was a ram in the bush. God will provide. And he provided the sacrifice, the clean animal, the sacrifice unto him. Uh, so we have to understand that uh, God will provide. And through this provision of God, Abraham called that place, what do you call it? Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Is that all right? The Lord will provide. And through Abraham's obedience, he became a blessed man, y'all. Uh, scripture said, let's go to uh, verse 15, chapter 22. Uh, scripture said in verse 15, And the angel of the Lord uh, called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee, seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And they, thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. And he said in verse 18, And in thy seed 
shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. I'm here to tell you it was through his obedience that his seed was multiplied as the stars of the heaven. It was through his obedience that his seed multiplied as the sand upon the seashore. It was through Abraham's obedience. Is is, is that right? I'm just laying a foundation, y'all. I'm just laying a foundation. Is that all right? And so, 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 so it was through his obedience. And we see in chapter 23 of Genesis where uh, Abraham's wife, Sarah, dies at 127 years old in the city of Kajatha, but the city of four, meaning Abraham, Isaac, Adam, and, and Jacob, the city of four that were buried there. She was buried in, Kaj- in, K- in Kajathaba, which is now known as Hebron. She was buried there. Then we see that Abraham goes and purchases the land of Machpelah to bury his wife, Sarah. And verse 19 says she was buried in the cave of the field. All right, now I'm finna get into the text, y'all. I'm finna get into the text. Genesis chapter 24. Y'all there? Amen. Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. It said, and Abraham was old, well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Is that all right? right. Amen. Now, once again, if I could come from the title of God sent a wingman. God sent. A wingman with a thought in mind, thanking Jesus. Thanking Jesus. So we see Abraham now, due to him being old, he physically could not travel back to northwest Mesopotamia from Canaan to find a wife for his only son. Uh, And now, my friends, we have to remember that lineage and inheritance and and covenants were prominent in biblical times. Uh, Abraham wanted the covenant between him and God, Genesis 17, verses 1 and 2. He wanted it to last. He wanted it to remain so to, to, to know that Isaac needed to be married to reproduce. He knew that. He knew that Isaac needed to be married to keep the covenant, to multiply their seed. So what did he do? He sent a wingman, y'all. Through his old age and not being able to travel back to get a wife for his son, Abraham sent a wingman. Now, 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 now y'all know what a wingman is, don't you? Y- y'all know what a wingman is, don't you? Uh, come on, brother. You, you know when, when, when you're looking at that pretty lady and, and, and she's over there and, and, and you might feel you don't have the confidence and you don't have the strength to go over there and talk to her. So you have to go call on a brother. You have to, you have to say, brother, story. That lady, she pretty back here. Can you go over there and holler at her for me and tell her that I like her? Y'all know what a wingman is, don't you? Abraham had to send a wingman because he was physically unable to go get a wife for his son. So he sent his elder servant. The scripture said uh, in chapter 15 that elder servant should have, should have been Eliza. But he was the elder servant and he loved him. And he'd done all that Abraham said unto do. And he sent, he sent him. He sent him to find a wife for his son. Is that all right? Uh, now, 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 y'all got to understand that, uh, that he couldn't do it by himself now. Uh, he, he couldn't do that by himself. So when, so, so when I look through and see that he sent the wingman, I, I, I think about, y'all, how, 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 how God sent one for us. Is that all right? Is that all right? Uh, and, and not only that, but what I really like about this text, y'all, is, is check it out when Abraham, when he, when he, when he tell him uh, that I got to make an oath with you. Y'all catch that? He said, I got to make an oath with you. And and that oath, Abraham knew that it was going to take some divine power. It was going to take some divine help, some divine strength for him to go find the right wife for Isaac. Amen. Uh Amen, y'all. And he knew that he needed to send this wingman. Now, can I give you a definition of what a wingman is, y'all? A wingman is someone who is on the inside. And it's used to help someone with intimate relationships. Let me say that one more time. A wingman is someone on the inside who is used to help someone with intimate relationships. So when I look through the scriptures, I see God having to use someone on the inside, Jesus, to help us gain an intimate relationship with him. 
Amen, y'all. Amen. Now, in Jesus' prayer in John 17 and 21, he said, that they all may be one as thy father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Amen. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. God simply wants to be intimate with us. So we have to send somebody on the inside. Amen. Is that all right, y'all? He had to send somebody on the inside so he can be intimate back with us. Uh, and that person was Jesus to gain that intimacy. Now, thank somebody ought to say, thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus to gain that intimate relationship. And, 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 and let me get back. Let me get back to my text. Let me get back to my text. Abraham said in uh, Genesis 24 and 3, what he said? He said, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth. That thou shalt not take up take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. What did Abraham say? He said, He said, I make you swear. Is that right? Uh, he once again he knew that it was gonna take that divine power. Amen. He knew that it was gonna take that divine help to find the right wife for Isaac. So he made the servant take an oath. By the Lord, the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, and also to put his hand under Abraham's thigh, which is the bodily zone associated with his prosperity. Now, now, now when you look back over your life, you should notice uh, that it took some divine help. Amen. When you look back over your life, you should notice it took some divine help, some divine power, some divine strength, something supernatural, something higher than you to fix you. Uh, and uh, I tell you myself, it's some things that only me and God know about what I done done. And, and, and in that, uh, I look back over my life and I tell somebody else, if it had not been for the Lord, amen, somebody, if it had not been for the Lord being on my side, they say, I don't know where I'd be. He knew it was going, I knew that it took some divine help to fix me. I knew it took some divine power to change my life. I knew it took something higher than me, something supernatural to change my life. Amen, somebody. Abraham knew that it was needed. He needed some divine power. So he made an oath with, uh, he made an oath with Elijah to, uh, with God to make sure to see to it that he found the right wife for Isaac. Amen, somebody. To see he found the white wife. Abraham knew it was going to take that divine help. Uh, so they went on with the oath, y'all, and, and, and the servant headed on his journey. He, he prayed before he got there, asking for good speed. He finally gets there, and he sees Rebecca, and he sees how beautiful she is, y'all. And he, and he asks for a drink. Uh, and not only does she give him some, but she also gives some to the camels. Is that right? That's right. Is that right? She gives some to the camels. Then the servant then blesses her with this jewelry and asks whose daughter who she was and, 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 it was, and who, if it was room in her father's house. She said, uh, she said she is Nahor's granddaughter, Abraham's brother, y'all. Uh, the servant then bowed down and worshiped the Lord. He, he, he then met her brother Laban, y'all. And, and when he got to Laban, Laban welcomed the, welcomed the servant and the, and the camels in the house. The servant then explained his mission. The family said, take her and do what the Lord has spoken. Uh, but, but, but the scripture said they wanted her to stay about 10 more days. Is that right? Am I right about it? It says she wanted, he, they wanted to stay about 10 more days. And the servant said, do not hinder me. The Lord has provided my way. Let me get back to my master. So then they let him go, y'all. And, they, and as they were arriving, Isaac was in the field. And Rebecca asked, she said, she said who, who, who is that? She saw, she saw Isaac in the field and she said, who is that man? And, and the eldest servant, he said, that's my master. And as they rode upon and approached her, Isaac, he saw the woman, and, and, and Elijah told Isaac all that he had done in his missionary journey to obtain his wife. And Scripture said he took the wife into his mother's tent, and he was comforted after his mother's death. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, it was through Abraham sending a winged man yeah. and through the divine power yeah. and the divine help from God. He, Abraham realized that if it had not been, he couldn't physically go obtain this wife by himself. So Abraham, he sent a winged man to go do the mission, but he sent that winged man with some divine help. He sent that winged man with an oath by the Lord to see to it that he found the right wife. That took obedience, y'all. I said at the beginning, he was, he was a blessed man through his obedience and through his faith. It took faith, y'all. It took faith for him to know that God will provide. Is that all right? It took faith for him to know that God will provide. But can, can, can I tell y'all the good news about this thing, though? Uh, I, I, I realize that uh, 
if God never sent the winged man for us, amen, somebody. Y'all will catch it in a minute. If God never sent a winged man for us, uh, we could never have that intimate relationship. Is that right? We, we, we can never have that intimate relationship with God. So, so, so I, when I stand here, I say, thank God for sending a wing man. Amen, y'all. Is that all right? I said, God sent a wing man, y'all. Somebody ought to get a little excited because, see, it, it, it took more than you to fix you. It took more than you to be sitting in this pew, in this church on today. It took a, it took a wing man, y'all. It took some divine power. It took some supernatural power. It took some help stronger than I. Amen. Can I, can I tell y'all a little bit about this wing man? Amen. Can, y'all, y'all got time for this? Can I just tell you just a little bit about this wing man? Uh, they, they say he is the first and the last, y'all. He is the beginning and the end. He is the keeper of creation and the creator of all. He is the architect of the universe and the manager of all time. He always was, always is, and always will be unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised but brought healing. He was pissed but eased pain. He was persecuted but brought freedom. He was dead but brings life. He was risen but bring power, and he reigns to bring peace. The world can't understand him. Armies can't defeat him. Schools can't explain him and leave Leaders can't ignore him. I said, Harry couldn't kill him. Nero couldn't crush him. The new age can't explain, re- replace him. And Oprah can't explain him away. I'm here to tell you, he is light. He is love. He is longevity. And he is the Lord. He is goodness and kindness and faithfulness. And he is God. He is holy and righteous and powerful. And he is pure. He's always, his ways are right. His word eternal and his will unchanging. And his mind is always on us. He's our savior, our God, our peace, our joy, our comfort, our Lord. And he rules our lives. Is that a little bit about Jesus? Can I tell you just a little bit more about Jesus? He said he's the ruler of our life. Yes. Amen, somebody. They say, look, can, can I tell you just a little more, brother, story? Can I tell you just a little bit about this, this wing man God sent? Look, they, 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 they said this wing man, y'all, he came from spirit unto flesh. Is that right? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Then they said that word became flesh. Is that right? Then not only did that word become flesh, but they said that word was born of a virgin Mary. They said he was born in a manger. Not only that, but then they said he grew up to be an upright, righteous man of God, able to endure and say withstand every tactic of the devil. That's why he is the author and creator and finisher of our faith. That's why we ought to look unto him because he's able to withstand every tactic of the enemy. Not only that, but then they said, they said this Jesus, y'all, after he grew up to be a righteous man, he went around city to city preaching the gospel in season, out of season, reproving, rebuking, and exhorting. I'm talking about Jesus, y'all. God sent the wing, man. Is that all right? Not only that, but then they was Hosanna, Hosanna on Sunday, but then they would crucify him, crucify him on Friday. Not only that, but when they crucified him, they put him on a cross and they said, he walked up Golgotha's hill. He walked up to the place of the skull. He walked up to Calvary. This Jesus hung on a the cross. They stretched him wide. They put nails in his hand. They put nails in his feet. They put thorns in his head. They pissed his side. Jesus then said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Then Jesus, they say, he said, I thirst. And they said they gave him some vinegar with some hyssop, y'all. And they, then Jesus said, he cried out with a loud voice and said, it is finished. He said he laid his head down. And he gave up the ghost. And he gave up the ghost. And Jesus then, y'all, when he gave up the ghost, they went up to him to, they went up to him to take him off the cross and bury him. Can I tell y'all, y'all got a little more time for this? And when they buried him, they, they, they said, Scripture said they were buried in a borrowed man's tomb, y'all. But what they didn't know, when they buried him in a borrowed man's tomb, they placed a rock in front of the rock, not knowing that the rock was soon going to get up. Amen, somebody. Then they, uh, this rock, he laid there all night Friday. This rock then laid there all Saturday morning. This rock then laid there all Saturday evening. But the Scripture said early Sunday morning, before the birds start chirping, before the cows start moving, before the roosters start crowing, before the Dude came up on the grass in the morning. Jesus got up with all power in heaven and in earth. I'm talking about Jesus, y'all. Thank God for sending a winged man. Now that this winged man got up, now the 
this wingman is now my refuge. This wingman is now my redeemer. This wingman is now my Messiah. This wingman is now my Christ. This wingman is now my friend. This wingman is now my brother. This wingman is now my Jehovah child. This wingman is my beginning and the end. This wingman is my first and the last. This wingman is my Alpha and Omega. This wingman is my Elohim. This wingman is my extra die. This wingman is Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for sending a wingman for me when I was so unworthy, when I was so undeserving, when I was so unfaithful to God, yet he sent a wingman for me. Unwilling to save me, God sent a wingman. So now I stand here today and I can say thank God. Thank God for Jesus. The man that hung, bled, and died for me. The man that gave his life for me. The man that paid a debt he didn't owe. The man that paid, the man that paid all oh, oh, my sins. The man that simply said, Father, let me take their place. Let me take on their sin. Let me take on their iniquity. Let me take on their pain. Let me take on their heartache. Let me take on their trouble. Let me take on their trial. Let me take on their tribulation. Let me take it all. Thank you, Jesus. To tell somebody, God sent the wingman, y'all. And we all can stand here today and once again just say, Thank God for Jesus. God knew that He was going to have to send some divine power, something that was on the inside. He knew he was going to send something on the inside that was in the spirit with him and bring it to the outside, bring it to flesh to save our life, to gain that intimacy with us. Same as Abraham, he needed somebody to go gain that intimacy with his son Isaac. So he sent a wingman. He sent Elias, his eldest servant of his house, to go acquire to go regain this intimacy so his seed could multiply so he can continue to keep the covenant with God where he can continue to be blessed I thank God for the new covenant with Jesus Christ and through him I can continue to be blessed through him I can continue to live a holy life it's through him I can continue to live righteously. It's through him I can continue to walk right. It's through him I can continue to talk right. It's through him I can continue to preach the gospel of peace. It's through him I can continue to be an example to all believers. It's through him I can continue to not let people despise my youth. It's through him I can continue to be the man of God. And I'm telling you that it's through him. So we all can just say now, look at your neighbor and say to God, be the glory. Thank God for sending a wingman for me. Amen. Amen. That's the lesson for today. If it had not been for the Lord, on your side, on my side, your side, your side, where would we be? Where would we be? Thank God for Jesus. Maybe somebody here that, that's not in this body. It may be somebody here that can't receive the spiritual gifts of being in the body. It may be somebody here who don't know this Jesus that we talk about. This Jesus, y'all. This Jesus said that this, this is his church. This Jesus said... Uh, Upon this rock, I will build my church. And when he said he'll build his church, how he was going to build? He said he was going to build it through his blood. It's my blood. It's Jesus' blood. He is in leadership of the church. It's only one church. It's one faith. It's one baptism. It's one Lord. And if you're not a part of this body of Christ, which is in the church of Christ, you will simply be headed to eternal damnation. There's no other way around it. 
There's no other, there's, there's, no, there's nothing else biblical about any other church but the church of Christ. But the church of Christ. My body, my blood, my church. And he's coming back for his church. He's coming back for his bride. And you need to be in the wedding party. You need to be in the wedding party. Come to the body of Christ today. Scripture said no man knows the day, nor the sun, nor the hour when the Son of God, the Son of Man shall return. Now is the appointed time. Now is the appointed time to receive this Jesus. It's the appointed time to know this God. It's the appointed time to, to gain this relationship with God. There's only, two, there's only two things you're going to get on the day of judgment. God is either going to tell you, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. It's time to bring you up and make you ruler over many. Or he will say, depart from me, thy worker of iniquity, for I have not known you. It's not about you thinking you know God. God needs to know you. You need to be in the body. To do that, God left a plan of salvation like no other. He said it's to hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized in the watery grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. For your sins to be covered. Blotted out. Washed out by the blood of Jesus. Baptized. And he said to walk faithful unto death to receive the crown of victory. To receive the crown of life, the crown of honor, the crown of glory. So on that day, you can hear, well done. And you walk the streets of gold and you put on your new robe, put on your new crown. You sing in the heavenly choir and you stand and you worship day in and day out. Sunday will never end. You simply, you simply might be in this category here where you obey but straight away. And if so, God is so forgiving and so loving and so he's so righteous that he will receive you. He's waiting for you to come back to stand, repent of your sin, and give your life back to him. If you're simply not in that, then you could just be asking for prayer for yourself or for somebody else. Not only would Green Meadow pray for you, but we will pray with you right here, right now, this time, this hour, this day. We'll pray with you. As the brothers come sing the invitation song and we all stand. If it had not been for the Lord on your side. I was living in sin. Thank God for Jesus. Wonder. We offer you to come now. The appointed time is now. To come unto the body of Christ. you, Lord.
count you, Lord. Yes, sir. I have two precious souls still standing. Start with Sister Tina. <laughs> 